Hello everybody. Uh, sorry for the slightly late start. I thought I'd repost the reference photo on the chat. So there was a few people just asking for the reference photo. So if you're on Facebook, uh, just have a look at the chat and you'll be able to see it. It's like one of the most recent comments. Uh, yeah, it's, it's also in the discussion section of the of the of the event. If you're on YouTube, guys, there is a link in the video description that has the reference photo. Uh, and yeah, I actually put a tiny version of it up on the screen because it's a little bit tricky to yeah have the whole photo up there. It kind of just blocks the view and gets in the way of you guys. So yeah, but thank you all for joining today. Um, it's a, it looks like a slightly overcast day today in Melbourne. We've got a few other Melburnians here. I think uh, Margaret's here. We've got a few others here in the chats on YouTube. Kizzy Cat, I think I remember you from last time. Thanks for coming along. Kizzy Cat, we've got KRB from South Carolina. Yvonne, nice to see you again, Yvonne. I hope you enjoy this this session. Um, it's it's another line of wash one, and a lot of you know a lot of you guys have been requesting for me to do some some more line of wash. I thought, you know, why not? Let's give this one a go. And it's kind of a more complicated version of the, the, the previous Murano ones that I've done in the past for those of you guys who've um, have seen those. But let me know how is the is the video and the audio going okay? Let me know in the chats. I got a new modem recently, so hopefully no hiccups this time around. But yeah, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, just yeah, write something in the chats and just let me know if you can hear and see me okay. There's often like a little bit of a delay I find as well uh, between when I say something and when I uh, when you guys actually hear it. It usually is about 10, 15 seconds or so. Uh, but yeah, I've middled around with the settings lately. So fingers crossed. And we've got Yvette here as well. Good to see you, Yvette. And... Uh, Yvette loves line and wash, especially those beach ones. Thank you for coming along. And Patrice Elaine, we've got Penny Stowe um, from, from Georgia. And let me know in the chats um, whereabouts you're from, maybe a little bit about you, what you want to learn today. And, you know, feel free to ask questions during the stream as well. That's going to, yeah, just let me sort of mod modify and change the way I I approach this session, so you know, might not be explaining something in enough detail. You might want to know a bit about you know, drawing figures or something. Just let me know in the chats, and I will uh, help you out during this session. So these tend to run a little bit longer than than I intend to because I sometimes I tend to talk a little bit, or uh, you know, sometimes I do like little bits and pieces of short. Uh, tutorials and thing in, in in between like drawing figures or drawing cards and stuff so here's a little this is this took me like five minutes um, a couple of these little sketches that i did beforehand of this scene and it doesn't look like much but i find one of the, the the best things you can do for yourself before you start painting is just pick up a bit of scrap paper and work out what colors you're going to use and do a bit of a compositional sketch sometimes the reference picture may be too complicated or just have colors or shadows and things like that that you need to practice before you actually do the the painting and today what I was trying to figure out is the shadows and yeah really just trying to perhaps make the shadows a little bit more uh, predominant because uh, the building the reference photo on the left you can see that there's a bit of shadow really like on the left side of the building but I was thinking even just to match the shadows to the building to the the center here um, it's very hard to see but when you zoom into the reference photo and you look at this building right in the center, you see that there are these nice soft shadows, um, lighter shadows running towards the right because the light source is to the left. So yeah, still undecided about that one. Um, worst comes to worst, we can do them like that. And if it doesn't work out, we can just color it in a little bit darker. But the most important thing I think for this reference photo and why I love this photo so much is the sense of light in the scene. I mean, look at that beautiful, uh, obviously, I don't have, have it straight up here on the, on the screen. Let me let me see if I can just enlarge the, uh, the reference photo a little bit. I mean, look at that that beautiful um, 
light just hitting the shades of the tops of these the door and the windows of the middle building and you've got this you know orange and blue you know from the from the window and then the the building itself i just love that that contrast and the the complementary colors there it's just so vibrant you've got this nice little boat in the center you know i there's a couple of boats to the left and right but i think i might just get rid of them because one should be i think one should be enough and we can make the rest of it a little bit darker a bit of pink on the left for that building and yeah something here to the right uh, we can get like kind of like a, a more neutral color to the right like an earthen color or something but yeah big aim here is to make sure with the first wash that we do we want to go through pretty light okay so yeah these are just little thoughts that go through my head when i first pick up that reference photo and think to myself okay what are we trying to what do i want to achieve here at the end of this session um what do i want the painting to look like and have a mental image of that in your head again keep that in your head because you have to have that goal throughout your drawing and your painting so i've got a whole bunch of pens here you don't need all these someone commented last time and said you know i don't have all these fancy pens like you have i'm you know how am i going to draw like you well at the end of the day if you've only got something like a 0.5 pen uh, 0.6 pen black pen completely fine you know i drew that entire scene before most scenes with a 0.5 pen um, some of these other ones just help to create some thinner lines so if i'm drawing buildings in the background little bits of detail does help so you know ideally you have two but if you've just got a one pen you're fine like a 0.5 pen some of you might not like line and wash or you might want to do this one just in normal watercolor and pencil perfectly fine as well you can use a pencil and you can follow along exactly the same with line and wash what happens is that uh well, line and wash basically for for those of you who are new here uh it's basically a a, a type of painting a type of a type of art where you're using the black pen contrasted with watercolor okay so um and those of you of course of those of you who are new here some of you might have not recognized me not seen me before um, I'm an artist, Darren Eo, from Melbourne, Victoria. So, yeah, uh, there's actually quite a few Melburnians around here in the in the chats, but a lot of guys from the the states as well, uh, which I I think it's awesome. We have nice international community. Uh, so, look, I, I don't want to keep you guys waiting anymore. I'm chatting around for like 11, 15, uh, 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started now. Um, pick out a pen. I'm going to grab myself out probably a 0.5 and a 0.3. I've got a 0.6 as well. Okay. But if you've just got a 0.5 or just a normal black pen, completely fine. Um, you know, in the description prior to this event, you would have noticed that I wrote there that um, you're making, try to make sure that you've got a pen that is waterproof. That just says uh, water proof fade proof yeah waterproof is most important permanent so then the, the pen doesn't run when you're drawing because we want those lines to show through all right um so i hope you're all ready to get started this is going to be great and we've got oh yves good to see you yves from singapore happy to be here after a long break yeah i haven't seen you for a while so thank you for joining again did you go on holidays or something or just sometimes yeah sometimes you just need a break from from art i mean i uh i sometimes get a little bit burnt out to be honest <laughs> from you, you know if i'm not in the mood or what have you so good to see you back again though you always come back to it i find okay so um first things first with this scene now i'm gonna go straight in with uh I'm going to go straight in with the pen. Now, those of you who are a little bit worried to go in right with the pen, what you can do is you can actually start with pencil, draw everything that I'm doing here in pencil, then afterwards go in with your pen and then erase the pencil afterwards. So um, don't fret. All right, so I've done this for a little while, so I'm going to be using just go straight in with the pen and I'll enlarge the reference photo. I usually have that up on a separate screen, so it just you know, can see what's going on, okay? And uh, first thing we wanna do is put in some of this stuff in the foreground. Uh, let me just move this uh, microphones kind of a bit in the way. And we wanna draw in the line roughly 
where the, the pavement starts, the footpath starts, okay? It's kind of like a bit of a wall. Yeah, it's like, uh, so I'm going to just use this little pen here and mark in a little bit of line here. This is going to be the kind of the water in the front, okay? There. And this is such a light line. I mean, I don't want to overdo it. Now, over, this is all just going to be the water, okay? The front. And of course, behind that, we've got the wall. Um, got a bit of the wall. Just outline that again. Okay, a couple of lines like that. So, uh, in fact, I think we could probably extend out that wall a little bit more like that. No, notice how light I'm going as well because um, I'm still not 100% sure about the lines. Okay, we're kind of just planning it out. Okay, let's get in the boat. So it's smack bang in the middle, okay? Uh, I like to do the stuff in the front first. And the reason why, the reason why is that I don't want to be cutting around and going over other lines that you've drawn before. So if you, yeah, if you basically do the stuff in the in the front first, so the figures, the people walking around. What's that? There's a lady with a selfie stick, and just walking around the background. Oh, I'll change that out. Guy sitting down in the doorway. Um, actually, those couple of things I didn't notice before, but that's good. Question from Kizzy Cat: What kind of eraser do you recommend to use on watercolor paper? Um, any kind of eraser is fine. Um, just a usual eraser that you get, you know, to erase lead pencil. But if you have one of those kneadable erasers, I find those are pretty good. Um, the only thing with those kneadable erasers, though, is that they I find they're not as effective as rub, at rubbing things out, um, but yeah, it just depends how hard you're pressing onto the onto the paper. If, I, if you're drawing in pencil first, just draw pretty lightly, yeah. Then it just makes it easier for you. Um, so there's that boat, and there's some kind of I don't know what this is, some type of uh, cloth that's covering the back of the boat, the engine, okay. And the way I sort of look at these shapes is, you know, look at it as a sorry, look at the boat as a shape. So it, it's really just like a rectangular shape at the back, okay? And um, the front of it just tapers off into this triangular, sharper point at, at the front here, like that, okay? Just a little point there, okay? Then it comes down. It's quite a big kind of boat, isn't it? Almost too obvious, but it uh, doesn't matter. Let's see how we go. Sometimes the pen work looks a little bit fumbly when you start. But persist, you have to persist. Okay, there's the boat, real basic. Now let's get in the footpath. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here, okay? Slither of room. Um, most of this is just the buildings in the back, so you don't wanna make the footpath too wide, okay? But something like this. I'm just going behind the boat. Um, there we go. These are all just kind of lighter lines okay just kind of i use the side of the pen so that it doesn't completely um, ink on the paper um i will lower the brightness actually i think it might be a little bit tricky i wonder if it's a little bit tricky for you guys to see what i am doing um uh, hang on let me just lower this, lower this camera setting a little bit, and um, I think that should be better for you. <clears throat> and I'll increase the, I'll have to increase the, the contrast a little bit later because I've got the window open. I've also got this light on, so there's a few things going on. Okay, so we've got the boat in. It's in front. What else do we have in front? Well, of course, we've got this person here kind of walking around. Um, but I think, you know, if, because you guys are pretty new, it might be best if we just draw in a quick little outline of the buildings first because then we can draw the figure in relative to the building because I find what people, a big mistake uh, often people make is drawing the figures too big. Okay, so if you draw the buildings in first, then you have a kind of reference as to how large the, the person should be. If you've got a doorway here that's only this big, but you've got a person that tall, you know, it's going to look a bit funny. So, um Three buildings, you know, three buildings. The first building, um, it's kind of like a third of the way through the page. It finishes off about a third of the way through the page. I'm just trying to estimate. Um, and I try to find patterns in, in the reference photo. For example, this, 
is this some kind of, it's like a red bollard here, yeah, on the side of that boat. And then here, there's like a kind of uh, a pylon, like a wooden pylon or something here. Roughly, these these two things, look at that. They're actually in line with the thirds, the thirds of the paper, okay? So one third, one third, um, roughly. I mean, this one actually goes out a bit uh, more than a third. So I'm going to just put in this line here. Okay, use those things that are naturally present in the reference photo uh, as a guide. Okay, and uh, here we go, roughly here. I'm gonna leave enough room for that, that building here to the um, left as well. Okay, there's actually quite a lot of detail in this in this scene and um, I thought it'd be a quick one, but I mean, it really just depends. The paper I'm using is 100% cotton paper and I'm actually using paper that is a little bit uh, it's it's very uh, smooth. So normally I use rough watercolor paper. It requires, uh, it's just easier to work on, but um, I'm gonna run out today. So I've actually found some smooth paper. We'll see how this goes. And so we've got the buildings, two buildings here. Okay, this is the third building, uh, sorry, the first building here. And what I wanna do is just put in roughly where the roof is, like maybe here, maybe we look. Maybe here, yeah. Uh, the side of that building, sorry, here. And bring that down like that. Good. Oops, it's kind of not 100% straight, but we'll make do. We have got some kind of connection. This little, this little thing connecting the buildings. I like that. It's cool. It's like a little bridge or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, that there. There we go. And uh, we can draw in some of the small details of the of it as well, like that. You know, just okay. This is all very light at the moment. We'll go in and we'll add some more details afterwards. Often it doesn't look like much when you begin. Okay, you just gotta just gotta persist. And we will get that back side of the building. Look, it kind of comes down. It's a box. Look at this building as a box and shapes. It's a window. What shape is that? Well, it's kind of like a rectangular shape and then there's two rectangles on the side there for the shutters, but this is just like a square box. It's a cube. And uh, bring that down roughly here, side of that building. It's really funny when I'm doing these, these sessions live, I tend to overthink what I'm doing in terms of the drawing and I'm much more confident when I'm just doing it on my own, have my, you know, you know, I just go with it, but uh, yeah, try not to overthink things. This is a, this is kind of like a rooftop uh, chimney or something like that. Look at that. I like this. I might put in a bit of the th this right side of it to make it look more three dimensional. Uh, coming down, down like that. There we go. Bit of th it makes it look a bit more three dimensional. And the top of it's just this kind of, uh, what do you call it? A triangle up the top. That's all you got. There we go. And there's actually another blue house or something back here. Can you see it? Just like a, a, the rooftop there, like that. And it can see the edges of it like that. There. Oops. That's not the best, but uh, we, we'll make do. There's even some kind of a lamp here. You know, I'm <laughs> I'm already in this section, so I thought, well, okay, what it, we'll just we'll just draw it in anyway, like a lamp or something. There, um, and this connects on with the wall here. It kind of sticks out of the wall like that. You notice that actually before. Um, sometimes, my, like you see what I'm doing here, when I'm in that area and I've got something, there's something there to draw, I'll just draw it in while we're here. Um, I don't follow any particular uh, structure other than, you know, trying to work from the forward uh, front to back. Okay, uh, so we've got the buildings in and we can also start penciling in the uh, windows, okay? And once we get the windows in, I think it's gonna be easier to put the figures in for you guys. Normally I'll just do the figures first, um, but this is gonna be easy for you to be able to estimate the size, the heights of the figures. I don't want you to end up with gigantic figures in here. There's a line here on this pink building. Can you see it? 
it just runs to the left of this bridge, kind of separating the building. So I've put, put a bit of pen there as a guideline because I know, you know, this is where we've got, um, let me just switch over to another pen. Pen's running out of ink. Had them for some time. They were given to me by a company called Etcher a long time ago, and they're starting to run out. So kind of what's that, like a, a doorway or something there? Um, like that. Okay, we should actually be a little bit further up, maybe here, doesn't matter. Um, window, and again, like I said, look, we're just drawing in, it's just this rectangle, yeah, a little rectangle, and there's kind of like a frame or something on the inside, doesn't really matter. On the sides, there are these two darker shutters, like that. Underneath, there's this white, long rectangular shape, I think that's like, what's a, that's a kind of a, a broom or something hanging off. I'll just leave that. Um, I might actually just put in a few of these horizontal lines here to just indicate, I don't know, a bit more detail of the shutters. Let's do this one here, okay? Um, the rooftop of the building actually is a bit darker. You've got this line that runs across like that and under, then underneath like this as well. And uh, it's yeah, it's like the, the the gutter, and then just before it hits the roof, we can now put in the second window. And notice where the second window starts and finishes. That if we've got that bridge in there, we use that bridge as a reference. It starts roughly here, just at, just on the same area where the bridge begins. And uh, make sure the windows line up as well. You don't want one. Cook well, you can have one over there, but it, you know, if you want it to look like the reference. Uh, yep, so there we go, just the window, the center part of the window coming in like that. Uh, you know, there's that bit of white, I don't know, section up the top. Okay, we've got the shutters, one here and one here. Okay, there we go. Just put in a few of these lines like I mentioned before. Quick little indications, okay. There we go. I'm starting to get a bit more confident in my drawing now. Okay. Takes a bit of time to get into it. All right. Uh, so there's actually a few bits and pieces on the building. I mean, you've got this, these like kind of vertical bits running down the building as well. We can put in a, a person here. And the way I like to, to, to put in people is that I put the uh, head first. Okay, and make sure that you are, uh, you know, depending on, on how the figure is walking, whether you want the figure person to walk to the left or the right, you just um, slant the head towards the, uh, the direction that they're walking. Okay, and there's the window and there's the door. So I'm going to put this lady's head like about here and slanting forward a little bit like that. Okay, and uh, look, she's kind of holding something. I'm, I'm not going to put in all the... The details of that just maybe have her arm out like that she's got a bag here okay and uh, just a part of her body there and I'll put in one of the legs like this just um, coming out and uh, to the back like this and the other one maybe coming to the front like this okay so we've got just a bit of a walk Okay, someone just walking towards the left like that. Um, you can also have another, you know, put another figure here as well. Leg here and leg there. Okay, walking in opposite directions. And, uh, you know, you can even have people that are just standing stationary, like, for example, in this building. Again, I, I do think it's, you know, for your benefit, we'll just draw in the little outlines of the, the buildings, little details of the buildings first. Um, so, yeah, if we want to put in the the little windows um, here, there's a couple of windows. I'm going to mark them out quickly first. Okay. And the shade, these little shade cloths, uh, we call them shades, that. And it's one. These are pretty important. Two. Okay, don't overthink it, just draw it in. Three, okay, good.
good. And let's put in the details below this window that here. Just the doorway coming down like that. Um, and then this other window as well. Okay, now because, you know, look at how I'm just sort of putting in these windows. Okay, just a little indication of them. Because um, the, the windows are drawn in now, see the figures are a little bit easier to add in, aren't they? Because you can roughly tell this person's, you know, around the same height of the door, just a little bit uh, shorter than that door. If you start drawing a person like with the head up here, they're gonna look gigantic. So here I can put in a person, you know, just for the sake of it to show you, just maybe standing here next to the door, um, maybe a little bit for, uh, more forwards, okay? Just standing there, okay, like that. And that makes sense. Same thing goes, if you draw a person that's really small here, that could be a child, um, you know, let me just just put one just put one in here, just maybe a smaller child or something. Um, maybe they're just standing, perhaps. Um, maybe they're just looking out. Okay. So that makes a bit more sense. Um yeah. let's have a look. Can we put in another figure here? Do we want another figure in? Up to you. Up to you. I mean, I'm just I'm just making this up as we go. Um, the windows we've got in pretty much. Um, they're not, see, they're not, they actually line up 100%. Notice this one is kind of um, a bit of a, a bit to the right. So that not directly above that one. Whereas this one actually is directly above uh, the other window. And, you know, look, if you're correcting something like what I'm doing, I actually drew the window in the wrong position before. Just go over it. Don't don't start scribbling or doing anything like that because that just makes it look more obvious. Um, I make I make um, lots of mistakes, like so-called mistakes in all of my drawings and paintings. And, you know, often you don't even really notice them afterwards. Well, I, I do, but um, <laughs> most people don't. If <laughs> once I have them out and show everyone afterwards, um, but this is a little bit of this. Uh, what do you call it? This little bit of plants and stuff growing out the window. Uh, just a little bit of detail like that. Okay, some texture there. Good. And uh, we'll get in the shutters. I really like these shutters, guys. Um, really like these shutters. We contrast them with the orange. It's going to be fantastic. A few of these uh, lines going out like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. It's some kind of like a plaque or something or I don't know just put it in no problem yeah, there's actually a couple more up the top um I might kind of mimic the this stuff here like some of this this green stuff growing up uh bottom here so it just could be like some windows up the top here okay just simplify it down like that I don't want it to have too much detail in there um but this is going to help with the general shadows and stuff that we do afterwards. I mean, this window's got an air conditioner in it. I, I don't want to put that in there, so I'll just leave that out. Let's just put, I'll put a little separator in the center of the window like that. You know, we can start putting in the uh, little shutters on these ones as well. Yeah, a couple of these little shutters. Okay. And there's all kinds of things on there, uh, little bits of interesting bits and pieces, but look, I'm probably just gonna paint that all, uh, paint it all blue, a little bit of blue, maybe cerulean mixed with, uh, yeah, cerulean mixed with a bit of ultramarine. Notice, look at that, I'm just drawing shapes, guys, just drawing shapes, um, rectangles, squares, okay. How are we all doing? Am I going too quickly for you? Or hopefully we are going all right. 
Um, there's a question here from Jeannie. He says, what number pen are you drawing with? This is a 0 0.3 millimeter nib. Let me see it. Let me just increase the brightness a little bit. Yeah, 0 0.3 nib. Um, I use between a 0.3 and a 0.5. And I also have, because I ha I'm, I'm quite fortunate to have a whole bunch of these pens, I can sort of flip in between. But for this demonstration, I'm trying just to use one nib. It makes things a bit easy for you guys as well. Um, we've got Peaceful Tahiti from Philippines. Nice to see you. And Vivian Turner from Williamsburg. Nice for, nice for you to join us, Vivian. And also Lucy from Japan. Wow, whereabouts in Japan? Uh, I'd love to go back there someday. Big fan of Japanese food. Uh, watching from uh, Nancy, watching from Western Maryland, USA. Let me just check my phone as well. I have another stream going up on my other art page, and there's probably some people on there. For some reason, Facebook does not combine all of the streams together. So I will often um, be um, sort of flipping in between the pages to make sure I'm answering questions. Um, hang on, let's have a look. Um, Kurodam Hana says, did, did you try to paint one day a character which doesn't appear in the main picture um, as partially a collage? Uh, not sure what you exactly mean, but I do make up, yeah, like I do just make things up along the way. And sometimes it just helps. When, when you see a reference photo like this, I mean, there's a person with a selfie stick, someone's sitting here, you know, I'll just add a, add a bit of, you know, by adding your own figures in here and changing it around a bit, I find that just helps, I don't know, tell a bit of a story. I mean, I didn't even mean to, that was just a highlight to everyone if you're drawing in a child or something like that, the general height of the child compared to the door. But now it looks like, yeah, maybe it's like, um, could be a father and his son or something like that. So, yeah, hope that answers your question. And I've already answered your question on the size of the pen. Um, Cat Bachelor is here as well from South Carolina. Okay, so continue on. Bicycle Richard. Oh, I've forgotten about the bicycle. That's a good point. Let's uh, draw in this bicycle, guys. So um, it's overlapping here. Okay. Wheel, circle, underneath the window. Oops. And and I'm not the best with I'm not the best with drawing these bikes, by the way. So bear with me. Here's another one. Okay. Circle. It's all this frame and stuff in it that can be a bit tricky, but uh, yeah, just a couple of dots in the center. There's that chain and stuff there. There. There's this uh, the seat that goes up like that, um, like that. And of course, you kind of got a bit of the indication of the handlebars. That looks like a, kind of looks like a bike. Okay, it's not the best, but uh, it is something that resembles a bike. Okay, you might even want to put a little basket or something at the front here. There we go. All right. Um, and also, what I've noticed is that there is a like wooden pylon that just runs up can you see it just runs like all the way into like behind the boat there coming up there's another one there's another one here as well uh let's just put it in okay overlapping shapes <clears throat> i'm trying not to go over the figures as well okay now i'm a bit more confident as to where everything is i can now go over the boat Bit darker. Use, I'm going to use a 0 0.6 pen. Um, thicker lines for stuff in the front does help to bring it forwards more. I mean, there's all this, this stuff on the front of the boat, but you know, I, I might just admit that I don't think that looks <laughs> so good. So we can just get rid of that and just draw in the boat. Okay, in front of it. I mean, it's so dark underneath. It's Difficult to see exactly what what's there. Um, 
there's another kind of looks like a part another wooden pylon those of you who've been lucky enough to go to venice would know that there's a lot of these just sticking out of the water and uh yeah that back part of the boat yeah i don't know what to do with that we'll just we'll leave it because it's kind of this creamy color and that's going to be good for getting in um, a little bit of warmth in this boat so it doesn't look all <clears throat> all too blue excuse me no okay build up detail it's just like when you're painting in watercolors i treat the drawing the same way um you, you know i go in pretty light to start off with and then finish it off with some darker lines like this uh, look at that there's just some kind of yeah like bollard or whatever floaty boat there yeah okay and you don't really see the bottom of the boat anyway it's going to be all dark um in the water change my mind i might get in this one here just put in something like that okay this will be a splash of that orangey color in that boat which uh yeah i think that will just will keep it interesting i guess okay uh, uh, yeah i'll leave that one out maybe we can put in a figure walking here um i mean there's actually these we've actually not drawn in much of this building have we let's put it in here this is a rectangle and the doorway here that these have these doors have these white frames so the person's sitting down there as well okay uh, that let's get in yeah maybe we could try put in a person here just sitting down just be sitting down in the doorway or whatever like that simple um uh, uh, door has a little number on top and a window here uh oh, it's actually a little bit further up like here see again i made a mistake as to where i put the window but just continue along and correct it um and just yeah you'll be fine okay uh, separator in the center of the window i'm actually thinking i might put another one in it looks kind of yeah i don't know it just looks kind of bare on the right hand side i'll just add one in for fun there these windows don't have any shutters as well which i think is good just i don't know something different okay there um yeah just a bit of that top part of that building let's get in the sides of the buildings now there getting a bit more confident with the line work okay side of this building here okay make sure that's straight all the way down like that okay it's slowly coming together yeah it's so looking like something but remember it's only just the drawing this is the it's like the skeleton of, of everything the um the plan the blueprint or whatever you want to call it but it's so important that's why i spend time on it because you don't want to end up painting over something that you're not really sure uh, you're not really sure of you yeah look there's these buildings and stuff all in the background there's actually quite a lot going on in there but look i'll just simplify it down and make it i'll just make it look like there's buildings going off in the distance like that which there are there are anyway okay good good um, a lot of detail on the side of this building. I don't think I want to like imply too much of it. Just maybe, I don't know, put in indication of a window or something like that there. Another window here. Okay. I don't want that to be too obvious. Okay. Just consolidate this line. When I say consolidate, I mean I just go over it again. 
again a second time round to make it more apparent. Um, this little connector bridge thing between the two buildings as well. How nice is this? How nice is that? Uh, continue over. Joining up. This is one of those parts that I, I drew in before, again, because the bridge is in front of all the stuff in the back. So, of course, um, draw it in first and it will help you. Okay. <clears throat> Got Francesca from Naples, Italy. Welcome, Francesca. And I don't know if you've, you're close, closer to Murano than most of us here. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the session today and let me know if you have any questions guys i'm watching the chats especially I've got both the chats up so yeah today we've got about how many people maybe like maybe about 60 people all up um so it's a smaller group a smaller group so if you do have questions let me know because i, I actually got time today to go through all of them sometimes it's just that you, you know, your questions are coming through so quickly that uh it's really overwhelming <clears throat> Pardon me. Catherine Curry says, can a micron pen be used for this as waterproof? Yes, micron pens are waterproof. And uh, yeah, I'd use that if you have one, Catherine. It usually tells you on the side of the pen. If you read the pen, it will tell you whether it's uh, waterproof. Uh, another, another word they use is permanent. Okay. Okay, we, we are really getting near to the end of the drawing. Um, the last, you know, little bits of bits and pieces are just like this window. In the windows, you really want to, I think anyway, I want to put in a bit more effort with them. Okay. And also what I'm going to do, uh, I'll use another pen in a moment. I just want to put in some of the darker sections in the, in the scene, like some of the darker areas of the windows and the doors and things like that. Um... I use another thicker sort of pen for that, but if you don't have a thicker pen, you just just use just use a normal the pen that you're using. It just takes you a little bit longer. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, maybe too, is that too much? Try this one. So, for example, this one here. Um, just get in a bit of darkness in this window here. Here, uh, it. Just a quick little fix, really. Um, but yeah, you don't need a pen like this. If you've just got your normal black liner, uh, use that. It just takes longer. This saves me time. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, it stops me from overthinking things as well. You know. Get in a, a bit of darkness here. These parts of the window, as you'll notice, are very dark and they... There are details in there that you can just imply, cut around. A little bit of contrast. Um, and of course, you don't have to do this now. You can actually do it afterwards in the watercolors too. Okay, I, I do both. I do this and then add in the watercolors over the top to just darken off even more, bring out more contrast. Okay, you know, uh, these little areas, and see the center of these windows as well, this little bit of... A uh, bit of darkness in there, you know, maybe on the edges of the windows, you know, tiny bit there as well, like that does does help. This door, ooh, I don't know what to do with that door, but let's do this one first, okay? A couple of the sections here, the door, like that. Um, I mean, they're just a bit of glass, yeah. Something like that. I don't know what this is, but there's some kind of bit of darkness there. Put that in. Don't need to. Windows here. Okay. When you're putting in these little dark bits and pieces, I, I try to just do it as quickly as possible to avoid overworking every anything. Um, yeah, the, the shadows and stuff on the edges of these shades, we don't need to really do until later. Okay. Um, the bike, you know, maybe a few something bits and pieces here. Got off a smaller one. Yeah. 
at risk of just overworking things as well. Oh, you know what? These these like little spokes like this that will help make it look more like a bike. I was wondering why it just ah, something's just missing in it. Yeah, these little tiny little spokes. There we go. I think that looks a bit better now. Uh I think we need some darkness here to balance out um balance everything out. Just checking um just checking the stream to see how we're going. Um just mind me for just a moment. This one up on my phone, the other stream up on my phone to make sure uh Let's see everyone. Okay, good. Yeah, there we go. There's a bit of darkness in that doorway, and it also has a secondary benefit of, uh, yeah, creating a bit of contrast with that figure. Hmm. Let me have a few little darker bits of the. Uh, Maybe on the rooftop here as well, just a few little tiny bits and pieces. Um, yeah, and, and again, like I said, you don't need to have a pen like this. You can just use your own, um, the same 0.5 millimeter pen. It just, I'm using this because I have, I have it and it just makes it quicker. Okay, a lot quicker. In the boat. Something else I've noticed in here, you can see there's actually a bit of darkness. Um, yeah, like a bit iffy because you can, of course, just do this afterwards as well. But it's nice to see that already at this point, things are kind of coming together. Yeah, you can see bits and pieces. Actually, the bottom of the boat, you know, it's pretty dark, but I'll we'll leave that for the watercolors. You know, otherwise, this is just going to turn out into one big, one big, uh, Big drawing. I'm going to try something, just darken some of these windows. I've segmented them uh, into four as well. Don't know, just thought I'd try it. Segment this one also into fours. Uh, like that. Kind of leaving a bit of that white frame on the edge there as well. A bit more contrast and uh, on the edges. Okay. Oh, here on the rooftop. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's really up to you how far you want to go. I, I sometimes just get, well, I get really into the actual drawing part of things at times and uh, overdo it. Uh, but the more you draw, the more detail it's going to look. This Look at this. There's some kind of lamp here. It looks beautiful. I, I can't even... I won't even be able to get something that resembles it, but uh, just something there, I don't know. Thought I'd draw that in, make it look like a little feature in the building. Um, there are some, you know, very, very subtle lines on the buildings, just separating out. So I, these, notice here, I'm doing some broken lines here and there. Okay, even here, there's like the purpley bit underneath the building. Didn't notice that little separator on that building and these little you know this is kind of little separator as well it's uh i mean they're like cords electrical bits and pieces up there as well but um i don't know just adds a bit of detail for the buildings all right um maybe another person it's on walking here Get away with it. One leg forwards, one leg behind like that. Just kind of strolling towards the left there. So we've only got quite a few figures. One, two, three, four, five, six figures in here. Um, you want to put one in here or not? Maybe. If someone just standing here. Okay. Simple. There, 
It's a person just standing here. I draw the heads kind of like rectangles, body sort of like rectangle or inverted triangle. Uh, then I've got the legs, like two little carrots. <laughs> and okay. I think that's almost pretty much ready to go. I'm thinking what else could we potentially add in here, but uh, I'm actually quite happy with how this looks. Um, we can go in there, add some shadows, add some some of the colors, have a bit of fun. Okay, and look, even afterwards, if you feel like you want to add some more details in, you can actually uh, work on it afterwards as well, once you finish the painting. Something I've done a few times as well. Okay, but we've got a good amount of structure here, and, and we can get started with the painting. Okay, how are you guys going? How are you guys going? Let me know in the chats. Have you finished your drawing? Um, are you struggling with anything? Let me know because we're going to get started with the painting soon. And Yvette says people add interest to a painting. Lots on this one. Yeah, it's it gives it life. These urban scenes, of course, you've got all the buildings and you've got the context, the location itself. But a bit of, you know, when you add people in there, it adds a bit of a story. And that's what I like. Seven people. <laughs> okay, might have gone overboard here, but you know, it's just a busy day, maybe. So, this depends on what you uh, personally you want to imply in this in this scene. Some of you might want it to be a more more quiet day. Okay, so you don't have to put in all these people there. Just want to quickly outline the bottom of these buildings again. Just double uh, make sure I've got something in there. All right. Uh, let's get cracking and I'm going to be using a small mop brush okay for this and this is going to be a really light wash okay we don't want any darks in there at all so firstly ooh, what do we want to start off first let's go with the pink I'm going to use a bit of uh, red just a bit of if you've got some carmine that's good as well I do have some a little bit of this titanium white I kind of mix in there as well. Keep it really light. In terms of the concentration of color, you're using maybe 80% water and 20% paint. Okay, keep pretty light. Um, that, go over the edges. Let's just get this nice quick wash in here. It's gonna go all the way over the right hand side. Paper that I'm using, again, it's not the usual paper that I practice with. This is a smooth paper. So it's got a bit more, um, it doesn't dry so nicely as the uh, textured paper. Cold press, medium textured paper. See how it just kind of pulls a bit more in areas? That's something you have to keep in mind when using smooth paper. Um, just cutting around bits and pieces of the figure even. Uh, this, I use window, it's like doors, the same color, the pink kind of color. Okay. So, yeah, I recommend using textured paper if you do, if you're just getting started out in watercolors, it's, yeah, you save yourself uh, a bit of effort there with just, with these washes. But the great thing about smooth paper is that the colors appear more vibrant and I believe you can paint more detailed things in it it's just easier to get details in um, top of this building there's like a bit of brown or something up there just get in a bit of that bit of brownie color okay just blend that in a touch good there uh, so have a look, what else do we have that in the background? There's, a, there's actually that building is kind of white and then underneath we've got a touch of yellowy color. Got some yellow ochre, maybe that would be also better. Just add some of that yellow ochre there in the background. Um, yeah, that this building is, look, I'll just get in an off-white color up the top there, why not? And uh, I've got some cerulean blue, a little bit of cerulean blue as well. 
And I actually think this is a real good opportunity to just get in an indication of the sky. And because looking at the building to the right, we've got this kind of orangey colored building as well. Um, this is going to just contrast a bit with the orange. Okay, a little bit of cerulean like that. Uh, yeah, I'll move this down here as well. This can be part of the sky in here. How's that? Okay. Let's have a bit of a look. This building here, I'll put in a bit of yellow. Maybe a yellow here. Like just a warmer color like that. Good. This is all really light wash work. Okay. A bit of brown. This is burnt sienna. Very light washes. I'm I'm just using, you know, a little bit of paint mixed with predominantly water. Like that. There we are. Like that. We put in some bit of wet and wet work here as well. I just thought I could re-wet this pink and drop in a bit of like I've got a bit of neutral tint, which is basically grey. Yeah. Um I mix a bit of grey with the pink to get a bit of darker, uh like a darker sort of colour here. I'll probably have to go over this again, but I I do like having some slightly darker uh softer sort of darks in there as well you can only really do this while the paint's still wet in there okay and that you know that might actually be enough for the shadow later so you know may not have to go back into it again just drop in a bit of a bit of gray if you've got if you don't have a gray just mix your three primary colors together okay you have a blue you have a red and you have a yellow mix them together and you get a nice gray that you can then use to do this sort of thing here Okay, just sort of feathering in a bit. The front side of that building is pretty light still. Um, yeah, again, I don't think this is going to be enough, but we'll, you know, why not just try and put some of that in darkness in there. Um, what else do we want to do? This bridge as well, it's, yeah, we'll put in some, I'll just make it a little bit of yellow ochre, touch of yellow ochre. And a bit of that burnt sienna mixed in like that. Okay, so I mean, it's still it's still fairly light. Okay, the brickwork and things like that. That's another thing that for those of you who like drawing details, you can actually go in with your pen afterwards, or even before when I was drawing, you can actually put in a bit of that the pen pen work in there to detail those bricks. I might if I haven't bothered. Uh, let's move over to this building to the right. It's quite a vibrant orange. I've got here a, ooh, I've actually got a quinacridone orange, which is a granulating orangey color. But the most vibrant orange I have is this one here, which is a pyrrole orange. Um, so let me just, let's try that pyrrole orange first. It's a very vibrant orange. And I'm almost tempted to, you know, I've, I've mixed a bit of the, Mixed a bit of the other orange in there as well to just, uh, yeah, so it doesn't look too obvious. <laughs> it is going to be obvious anyway. Um, and just cut around the buildings. Look at that. Just cut around that one. Okay. And notice also there are these these little plants coming out the window. So just cut around them. Okay. On top of the window, there is this little uh, white, what do you call it? Thing -o frame just cut around that as well and notice you well guys i'm using very very little paint here it's just mostly water you'd, you'd be surprised how little you need okay bring that down oh i've gone too far down this should be purple at the base doesn't matter we'll get that in in just a moment let's do this building to the right it's like a what's it like a reddish brown color mix in a bit of Bit of orange and a bit of brown. That. I mean, it's really dark actually. Um, it's like a yeah. And some burnt sienna as well. Um, I want these two buildings to blend together a bit here on the edge. 
just get this out the way and get it done. Okay. Here we are. We're getting there. It's starting to look like something. What do you guys think? And how are you going? Do you have any questions? If you have any questions, I'm going to double check the chats and make sure you let me know. Hey, Shinolan, good to see you. You just, just, uh, you just join us. Okay. Alrighty. Purple. I've got, I've already got my pre-mix purple. I'm just going to drop a touch of it in here. Now, uh, you can mix up your own purple if you don't have that. You just use a bit of blue and a bit of red. Mix them together and you get yourself a purple. Just going to drop some of that in here, here. I love the color purple. Amazing. <clears throat> some of this stuff here, see how it's just pulled in a weird area like that? I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Might work out better. Okay, cutting around that figure. A touch, just getting the, the, the darkness of that door. All right, let's start putting in uh, the ground. I'm gonna use some yellow ochre mixed in with a bit of this brighter yellow. Okay, mostly just water again, guys, just mostly water. Um, I don't want it too vibrant. Let me just dull it down a touch. Yep. Okay, just go over it like that. Just a quick little wash. Yeah, would have actually liked it to blend in with the buildings more, but it doesn't matter. Okay, good. Um, so that's going to be your light. It's going to be your light on the ground. The boats, you know, we've got a nice vibrant blue here. Can we have... I'm going to swap over to a smaller flat brush. Where's my flat brush? Yeah. Just got an old, an old kind of flat brush. Synthetic flat brush. You don't need anything special. Ultramarine is quite a vibrant blue color. I'm going to use that here. Um, the top of the, the top of it, maybe some, put in a little bit of cerulean up the top here. Just cerulean. Get some lavender type color, which is like a yeah, it's like a lilac color here as well. You can use some of that. Doesn't matter. Um, some of that. Good, good, good. Okay. Bring in these darker blues or whatever we have down the base like this. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Starting to work. Bit of darkness here. Really like the base of the boat is quite dark, but even darker than that is the water. Yeah. So this boat here is kind of like an orangey red color. It's just a warm color. I'm not fussed about what it is really, but I'll put in a bit of this reddish color. It's almost going to turn purple, something like that. Okay, leave that white in. Um, for the rest of the water and, and what have you, I'm going to use a little round uh, flat brush, uh, sorry, mop brush. Okay, let's just print. Bring down some of this stuff and a bit of this kind of creamy color out the back here. 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 Okay. Uh, it's all just pretty dark under the base, isn't it? I've got some neutral tint or just the leftovers of my whatever I've used on my palette last. Maybe some purple as well. And I'm just going to go and get this in this darkness at the base okay really dark mind you that 
there. Um, yeah. Uh, this little bollard or whatever actually is commonly like a brown color, like a light brown color. Just quickly indicate that like that. Okay, there, there. Um, I should have more of this kind of white color coming down there. Just blend it in, no problems. Okay, good. Okay. okay. Good. Susan's asking, will the video be available after the session? I'm slow, can't keep up. Yeah, it will be available. Susan. Uh, Salon says, like your step-by-step -step approach with shapes, seven colors simplifying the process. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I think that's what I probably do, do well in terms of <laughs> when I'm learning something, I try to conceptualize it as a process and painting is a process just like anything else so um, if you can break it down into small steps it makes your life so much easier you know um when you especially when you, you you're you're painting shapes you know not thinking of them as um large abstract objects um yeah it helps it really helps paint's all kind of gone on the edge of the tape it's great because I'll take off the tape later. It'll be fine. Let's have a bit of fun with the figures. Let's put in some colors for the figures. We will put in, we will put in, I think some blue or something. This is a lilac color, sorry. There, a little bit of lilac for this person. And um, I'll just dull down the legs a bit like that. I'll have to add in the legs afterwards, actually, a bit more afterwards. But uh, I like to put in some details of the figures and you know kind of thing i just used a bit of white gouache here diluted white gouache i'll leave this figure just sitting down here um you know in the dark somewhere maybe with lights just caught caught that person there a bit of cooler color but not too vibrant just a little bit of coolness and I'm going to add a bit of dark on the right hand side of that figure. Um, lady here has really got quite a vibrant orange uh, red outfit on. I'll just try try that. Yeah. Um, the legs will do afterwards. This figure, maybe some purple. Purplish color. Okay. You know, the legs I said we'll, we'll do after because we can just put add the shadows of the, the uh, of them on as well easily. Join up the shadows with the legs. We'll, we get this child in a bit more yellow, something like that. Okay. The door, you know, they're loose little bits that I forgot to put in, like this bit of brown or whatever there. A bit of brown for that door. Let that do its thing. Oh, and we know what we've forgotten? We've forgotten this blue on the, the shutters. Mm. I'm going to use... Oh, it's kind of tricky, isn't it? We, we, we don't want to overdo it. Let me just try a bit of this cerulean. Yeah. <clears throat> cerulean blue is your best bet. I mean, it's not as vibrant as the reference photo because I think it's been edited. If I use, for example, some of this stuff, this is a bit of ultramarine blue. Let me just try to see what this looks like. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more vibrant. You can go with that even. Ultramarine, just diluted down. Just checking. Uh, a bit ultramarine blue, ultramarine. Um, and this is really the most vibrant. Um, I'm just using it straight from the palette with a bit of water in there. Okay. Yeah. Give me some more of this uh, cerulean. So yeah, it's kind of like a mix of ultramarine and cerulean. 
like that. What else do we need? We need to do these shutters here to the left. Here. Just darken it down. Yeah. Something like that. Um, a bit of green for these like plants or whatever here. That should green. You can mix up your greens yourself or you can use a pre-mixed green. I'm, I've got a pre-mixed green, so I'm just using that. Okay. Also some up here. Don't do this. Don't do all these. Uh, don't do them too dark as well. So just a bit of water in there and then let it spread out the touch. Okay. There we go. Yeah. And on the top of these little shades, they're a really lovely warm color. I'm going to try to maybe replicate that. A bit of white, a bit of yellow, vibrant yellow. Mix this together. Maybe a touch of orange in there. Yeah, it's kind of like in between yellow and orange, isn't it? Like, let's try this. Needs to be lighter. Something like that. Lift off. It's too much. Okay. A bit more yellow. In there. Tricky to match colors at times. Um. I also don't want it to look too gaudy. Okay. Alrighty. So we are done with that first wash. And what we're going to do, I'm going to give this a quick dry. And we'll do the remainder of it, put the shadows in.
Hey guys, uh, I had a bit of a bit of issue. The stream just sort of cut out again halfway, but we're back again. Um, yeah. So just give me one second. I'm just resharing the link, and I I think this is something to do with the the software uh, that I'm using. But it seems like when I pause it for too long, it just cuts out. But uh, I'm back anyhow. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me know if you have any questions as well. I'm still available here. We're going to do the second part, uh, second part of this scene. And it's going to be kind of the most fun part, in my opinion, because we're basically just looking at putting in all the little shadows and the little details that will bring it together because we still got a little little bit of work to do but it won't take too long at all so uh, let me know if you can hear me okay guys and uh, yeah just let me know if you can if you can hear and see me okay on both Facebook and YouTube and we will get cracking um, I might just put the link on the other. I'll just put the link on the other uh, other stream as well quickly. Okay, cool. Um, how's everyone going on YouTube? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, Catherine. Yep, and also America Twelve. You just saw your. Post. Okay, good. Vivian says, can hear me. Okay, good. We got success. Um, let's continue. Let's get cracking. Okay. Um, yeah, it tends to be a little bit easier on YouTube because if you lose connection to the stream, YouTube will just like pause the video and then I can just get back onto it. But to connect back to everything, like, yeah, to connect back into Facebook is really a bit of a pain. Um, okay, so let's get started, guys. I am going to pick up um, a little flat brush. All right, a little flat brush. And you can use a flat brush or you can also use like a round brush, um, just something that doesn't hold too much paint, even a small, uh, a small little mop brush is fine as well small mop brush is fine so um let's get let's get uh started um uh, okay so i'm going to pick up a bit of a shadow color and we're going to mix one up i'm going to use it's interesting because the shadows are actually orange like a darker sort of orange on this building so let's pick up a bit of that orange color and I'm going to mix it in with some gray. This is a bit of neutral tint. Okay, I might actually mix it over here. I don't want it to mix in with all the blues and stuff. A little bit of neutral tint, which is like a, yeah, it's like a grayish color. Okay, and we have a darker sort of less saturated orange. Blue. Okay. And let's put this in. Let's just have a test. Um, How does that look? Uh, maybe a little tiny bit darker. Okay, just underneath here. And you can see the shadows just run towards the right. Okay, they go like kind of from here to here. Like that, like that, like that. Even on top, the window there has got some kind of, uh, what do you want to call it, shadow up the top there as well. There. Okay, a bit of shadow under here as well. A bit more gray, tiny bit more gray in there. Like that. Um, it's just a dark orange. That, and a bit of it running down to the right. Dull it down some more. Okay, like that, yeah, yeah, okay, a 
more gray in there, tiny bit more gray. This and uh, put in this one as well, a little bit of a shadow coming in from the right hand side like that. Left hand side of the building, uh, you know, just that, bring that down a bit further here. I mean, it's such a soft looking shadow. It's hard to to get in, but it's it's subtle. Um, and runs kind of across these these windows. Um, gone a bit overboard with this section up the top here, but it doesn't matter. Um, we can continue on anyway. Uh, there, shadow on the right hand side. Um, you got these shadows of the plants and things also sort of running towards the right. Here, 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 um, like that. Okay, and a bit maybe on top of the this little shade, a little bit of darkness here. Like that. Okay, here, like that, um, we notice like in, inside, in between the buildings as well, you will have a bit of extra darkness, like here, so I'm going to just add in a little bit more of this neutral tint in the center of these areas of the buildings, like that, just to bring out um, a little bit of extra darkness. Um, and you also got this little bits of shadow running underneath the windows here. Okay. That. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of dark there. Um, good. Just try to dab off this bit of. Oh, that's a bit too tiny, bit too dark up the top. Okay. Let's try for this other building here on the right, and I'm actually going to darken that building down a fair bit and put in some more brown, uh, a little bit more darker brown in here. In areas, okay, like that. In the shadow of this building, we can just sort of add in like this. The, that's not the building, the windows underneath, like that. There. Okay. Um, it's just yeah, kind of like a brownish color again over the top to re-emphasize it, and um, you're bringing out light actually on the building by doing this. Okay. Just kind of coming across. Here on the grit, the bottom part of the building there. Okay. Let's have a look at this one on the right. I, again, I was sort of deciding whether, it's half decided on whether to actually put in these uh, shadows or not, um, darker shadows. But let's just try it. Uh, okay, a bit of red and a bit of neutral tint, like that. Um, oh, another thing I want to do is just darken down the right side of this building. This is important. Just here, look. Um, just using a bit of this grayish color left over, and darkening a little bit down like this. Okay, to so just indicate the light source from the left hand side. Okay. Maybe that left that light source. Okay. And uh, that shadow again on the building. I do think we're going to need a larger 
shadow shape maybe coming in from the left hand side from an imaginary another imaginary building um, can I use how about we use a larger mop brush for that a bit of red a bit of gray that you have just left over on the palette to dull it down okay um, I'm just going to do this sort of thing just a bit of darkness or whatever hitting the building okay but I'm still leaving some of that previous wash on there as well okay good so we've got some indication of some shadows uh, maybe a bit there as well the right hand side because there would be also forming a bit of a shadow there um, darkness there Okay, and let's get going and put in the details of the figures. So just some of the smaller details like the legs and things like that. Okay, I'm going to use a neutral tint, really dark color, neutral tint. Okay, and we will put in legs like this here's a figure and the leg of this uh, person just walking forwards okay really dark it's it's basically just black of mixed together um there just to get in the, really the the sharpest contrasts okay a couple of legs there for this figure like that okay um Let's see what else we've got. A couple of figures here. They're standing up, getting sort of closer to the front of the scene. Um, even the bike, you can re-emphasize some parts of it. And this is why I say, you know, if you before if you didn't get in all the details of the buildings, it doesn't matter because you can just still go over the top of it with the with the brush, like I, like what I'm doing here. Okay. A bit more of this figure here that's kind of closer to the foreground actually um, and I'm gonna put in a bit of shadow on the ground some sharper like a sharper looking shadow running towards the right okay the same just join this one up a touch like that there okay look at that just a bit of shadow running to the right hand side um, of those figures indicating the light source you just join the legs up with that shadow on the ground okay this one here as well just a bit of shadow running to the right you can even have shadows that are running in but they're not you know from other shapes and things off in the background okay and i do think i want to darken that area in the back more it's not dark enough um in some parts like here just putting in a bit more of this grayish purpley color in this section i'm just also trying to leave out some of that pink in the back as well so that we've got some variation in color okay like that uh here here there good just want to yeah just trying to darken off that building a little bit and even here perhaps a little bit of contrast behind this figure okay look at that okay um, what else can we detail well I think the boat you could go back into it a little bit and just put in a bit of darkness underneath underneath here okay um, in areas don't have to but um yeah a little bit there and especially maybe underneath the boat would be good just to anchor it better just to anchor it really dark paint i'm using mainly paint kind of the opposite of before more paint less water 
these wooden pylons, I want to make some of them kind of darker, especially on the right hand side of them. This one here, like that, here, like that, this one here, um, let's put in a bit of, I'm going to put a little bit of gouache, a little bit of white gouache there as well. Some yellow for this uh, part of the boat. Okay, join that on a bit like that. Good. Okay, some more darks um, that we can use to finish this off. And, you know, a bit up here in the corner, like up the windows, we can just sort of bring out really the darkest contrast that you would like okay. but use it I mean use these darker colors quite sparingly because you don't want to get rid of uh, all the previous washes as well uh, look at that yeah. a bit more on the windows and that kind of thing here Yep. You notice there's a bit more darkness underneath this area here, so I'll just go ahead and rejig this a bit like that. Just, you know, just kind of darken this area down more because it's under, I mean, it's under the shade. Tricky, this one. I really didn't think it would take so long, but uh, there, yeah, there's a really a lot to to keep in mind here with these shadows and everything. A bit more green here for the uh, the darker sections of the uh, shrubs and stuff. There, yeah, just a bit of darkness in some parts, and mainly on the right hand side of them, like that, and here as well. Okay, it's this layering that brings out the details, makes it look like something. Okay, maybe a bit of, um, oh, probably some brown in here would be good. Just like that. Okay. Do we need any more blue? Maybe a little bit of, a little bit extra detail on the windows. Tiny bit of extra detail. This and some parts underneath the window. Oops. That here, here. You just, I mean, really at this point, you're just finding bits and pieces that you can um, emphasize, add on. Mm. I'll darken this down a bit, this little bridge thing, eh? Neutral color, a bit of gray in there as well. Okay. I'll put a bit more uh, impression on the right hand side of the windows as well and increase that sense of uh, feeling of the light coming in from the left. Okay. Good. Okay. 
Um, we're pretty much, we are almost done. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what else I would like to add on here. Um, but it's all looking pretty decent for me. I mean, afterwards, I like to go through and add in some extra details here and there. Let's put in uh, maybe a bit of highlights, some lighter colored highlights to finish it off. I've got, I've got some white gouache, a little bit of white gouache. Um, how are you guys going on? On um, Oh, the chimney. <laughs> you forgot about that, Catherine. You barely... Sometimes you just realize, I don't pick the most... Uh, or subjects that I think are going to be easy, but then you, you then start and it becomes... You realize that they're actually more complicated than you think. Okay, here we go. How's that? Um, blend that off a bit down the bottom. Okay, um, a little bit of white gouache is good for highlights. I like to use this you know, fairly often right at the end of my paintings, and I'll pick it up just straight from the tube. And we will go over the top. So, for example, this figure here in the center, we can put in a bit on the head like this. A bit of white on the head and on the shoulder. Um, even on this little wooden pylon like that, there on the bike. You know, anywhere that you think you would like a bit of light, impression of light, you know, on the back of that figure. Look at that. There. And this person here just walking and um, a bit of the light maybe hitting the front here, here on the left. Uh, you know, the trick is not to overdo it, though. Just get, get it done. You know, sometimes you lose a bit of that white on the boats and things as well. You can just sort of bring it back. Uh, you know, also in the buildings, you notice, see these little white frames you know you can bring them back yeah like that if you've gone over them yeah so we'll just neat tidies things up really bit, bit of a tidying up that yeah. Okay. Some here would be good. This, the, the building to the left just for some reason to me just looks a little bare. Um, we'll put it in a few little sh quick brush strokes of that gouache there and um, Parts. Okay, so I think we are pretty much done for this one. I'm going to take off the paper and we'll see what it looks like. And uh, I mean, not bad for about an hour's uh, for about an hour's work here. I will go back into it again, I think, later and just tidy it up a touch. Uh, the more you time you spend on it and using smaller brushes at this stage, the more detailed it will end up looking. Okay, I love this framing effect as well when you're using just a bit of tape on the edges of your paper. Christ. Okay. <laughs> that. Looks just a little bit more finished. Then, uh, oh. I'm struggling getting this tape off today. There we go. Got there. So this is it. This is what we've done today, and uh, I think it looks pretty decent. You know, I'll, we'll go. You know, like I said, I will maybe go back into it again later to. Uh, detail detail some more but what do you think 
let me know what you think and, and whether you found um, yeah whether you found the, the session today uh, what, what did you like the most out of the session what would you like to see for next time as well Catherine's asking what kind of board you tape your paper to it is kind of uh, it's plastic it's stuff called cora flute here in Australia and um, yeah it's basically uh, it's just like a bit of plastic that I just reuse over and over I've got two bits one for larger paintings one for smaller sort of paintings but these line and wash paintings are really great because you can just whip them out quickly and then you can just grab a pen start drawing um, do a little painting you can use these as cards you can give them to friends um, you know you can sell them you know they're just nice little impressions of a scene and there's no pressure to get in all the exact details as you can see they're not exact but you can tell you know roughly the location with context okay um, how, let's have a look. How are you guys doing on, on Facebook? I think um I've always had troubles on Facebook these days. I don't know why, but uh you just keep losing losing connection on there. I'll have to have to either just post a link on YouTube and, and deal with that. But for those of you guys who are still on on uh still on on YouTube, I can see there's about 30 people watching at the moment. Um check the links in the the description i'll also put a link in the chat i've got a new um i've got a new class actually that i've made it's a new program that is uh solely on urban landscapes so just check that in the links if you want to if you want to take a look at that um the links in the description as well i have some uh, links to my patreon and also my watercolor essentials program for those of you who don't know much about this program it's a 75 course um yeah it's 75 course program that just has hundreds and hundreds of different projects and um the difference with it as well is that i, I talk uh, and i have classes that are based on things like tone and values you know a bit of drawing as well that's got line and wash classes that you can have a look at patreon just allows people to sign up on a monthly basis so there's three different tiers if you sign up for the ten dollar tier which is uh, i think it's the cerulean tier you get access to i think 38 or something courses that you can have a look at so if you're not sure you can try that one out um you know but uh, the students that really like my work they and and you know uh, my style and my my style of teaching you know you can buy the full uh, the full thing which is on my uh which is in the first link the watercolor essentials program so that just has pretty much all my courses in it, all 75 um do me a favor as well if you like the video if you found it helpful um share it share it around on you know on facebook or with your friends um even if you just share it with one person that really really helps me out a lot and it makes it sustainable so that I can keep doing this. You know, I, I run them, run these sessions usually once a month, but I wanted to do another one today because a few of you guys were asking me to do some line and wash and it's been a while. I, I tend to stick more with watercolors these days, actually. Um, yeah, just pure, pure watercolors. Um, but yeah, you know, like the video, share it around. And um, if you want to learn more from me, like I said, the Patreon link is in the description of the video. And um, also the there's a couple of links there to my Watercolor Essentials program and also the new course that I've just created, Mastering Urban Landscapes in Watercolor. And the new one, the Landscapes and Water, uh, Urban Landscapes in Watercolor, I'm going to continue adding a few other bonus courses and materials to that as well so that's just more focused on on this side of things um other than that guys do you have any other questions or or any other comments uh, let me know because uh, otherwise i'll probably finish off finish off the the stream soon and um yeah I'll, what i might do actually if is still around I, while I'm waiting for questions I'll just run through I'll just show you what um, some of the things that are included in my watercolor essentials program I usually run through a bit of a presentation on it as well so um, I'll just show you what's 
what's essentially included in case uh, you haven't seen it before. But I'll have to open it up properly. Uh, okay. Um, let's just give me a second here. Um, so, like I said before, I mean, this is, hasn't been updated, but I've now recently added in another five uh, another five classes in this uh, in this package so I've got 75 courses and uh, like I said unlimited instant access to all of my all of my work um, all of my best classes and that they're separate from all these ones that I run on YouTube so this is I mean this is one here just a quick example of a lighthouse scene uh, it took about 45 minutes to do and uh, use a bit of gouache here at the front and a lot of people like them because you can learn at your own pace. You can even slow down the video because I know I work pretty quickly as well. And I have time to actually go through all the individual points and things, um, you know, take a bit more, go into a bit more depth. So, yeah, these are just a few uh, paintings that are included and, and projects. And these are just a few out of, you know, a ton of them in there. A bit of portraiture as well. And I've also got the ads free version of a lot of these workshops that I run. So different subjects and stuff that I that I deal with. Um, as you can see, this is one from a previous session and it's uh, you know a little bit more simpler than the one that we did today. Okay. And I've got a pretty loose, loose kind of style. Um, at times I do get a bit more detailed with certain individual projects. Uh, especially as recently I've been doing much more detailed stuff, just spending a bit more time uh, for those of you guys who'd like, um, yeah, just more detailed videos and detailed um, projects to work on. So some of these are also requested by my previous students who want to learn uh, specific topics or specific um, scenes as well. So... Yeah, these are all included in that 75 course program. And, you know, when I first started off painting, I found it was, I mean, it was just really difficult knowing the process of painting. Um, you know, practice is important, but if you don't get how, uh, which steps come first, how to mix your paints, when to apply certain techniques, a lot of the time just flying in blind and you're practicing, but you're not really getting anywhere. You're just spinning your tires. So uh, I always go through the entire process in each of my scenes. I go go through in terms of, you know, like how I did today, all, you know, the color mixing, exactly how much water to paint ratio I'm using and also why I'm doing certain things. Why am I using this brush or why am I mixing these two paints together? So, um, yeah, these are some of the, ratings on my courses and um, that are included in my watercolor essential essentials program uh, these are the averages of all of the uh, courses here at the bottom and these are the averages of uh, I think the last 27 uh, not 27 but the last uh, the last session that I ran I don't know when that was and uh, as you can see get pretty good reviews um, as well so um yeah let me know guys if you have any questions i mean the session sort of cut out halfway cut out a bit halfway today um but uh yeah i've got a, a few students that enrolled recently and uh, one of the best things you get is you get some feedback from me so tailored feedback so a couple months from the time you register you can send me your paintings ask me questions and um, saves time because you get to see how I think and I can immediately kind of identify, okay, what areas do you need to work on? Are you not going dark enough in the shadows? Um, the proportions, the composition, you know, could they be improved? Uh, should you focus on some figures or something like that? And how do you draw figures? So I can go through and um, you better learn faster. Okay, this is sort of a before and after. How I used to paint back then as well, so it doesn't have to take doesn't have to take that long. Um, if you join as well, you do get access to my private academy. 
okay? And uh, that's for afterwards, you know, after the two months, you can still ask questions there, contact me and get priority support. Um, like I said, it's now 75, but I used to have only 30 courses in there, okay? In the Watercolor Essentials program. And uh, yeah, get access to all the previous live workshops. Um, that's the price that I, uh, my standard price that I charge on it. And yeah, you get access, unlimited access to everything, um, everything in there. So it's um, 75, 75 courses. So yeah, like I said, um, it is in the links if you want to sign up. And that's, that's like a, um, a once-off payment. And if you're not sure as well, but you just want to see what other classes are available, you can just sign up for my Patreon. And, you know, on there, there's three different tiers. Um, three different tiers, as you can see here, there's like a, um, you know, like a $10. This is all in Australian dollars. It's kind of converted. It's a $10 tier, $20 tier, and a $30, um, a $30 tier. But even at the $10 tier, you get access to 43 um, 43 of my courses, which I think is pretty, you know, pretty good value and also supports me and helps me continue, um, yeah, continue running this thing. It's, it's a great joy to me. I love painting and, um, I, I mean, it's really like a dream come true to be able to teach people, you know, how to, how to paint, get better at it. Um, doesn't, doesn't feel like a job to me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Catherine's asking, you would love to see more realistic paintings in the future. Yeah, uh, I, I have done more kind of urban landscape ones, so uh, particular scenes like a Venice one. And actually, I've, I've finished recently in the last few days another five paintings of pa just photographs that I took when I was on, on holidays, um, holidaying over in Europe and overseas and a few different places. And, you know, just being able to turn your, your paintings into into nice nice little impressions like this and even more detailed impressions really just immortalizes them in your mind so yeah the shadows here um yeah, i don't mind them now i thought in the beginning i'd just i'd overwork them or something like that but uh you gotta remember with the shadows they're kind of especially with this uh this sort of shadow they're kind of like a darker version of whatever color that background um that background color is so i've just gone with like a darker orange um or in here like i've just been little bits of purple and gray in there as well but it's still warmer okay so i think it's a nice little nice little um thing not bad for about an hour's work okay um but yeah guys let me know if you have any more questions i'm gonna stay on for a little bit longer and then i will grab something and grab some uh some lunch actually and um call it a call it a day but uh thank you for joining and uh salon um really appreciate you being here and yvonne catherine yvette i hope you're still around and and uh you made it made it through to the end but yeah this will be available also afterwards for you guys to to uh to rewatch it if you need to. Okay. But yeah, remember there's, I've also got another event coming up in two weeks. So uh, we're going to be painting just the pure watercolor. We're going to be painting a scene of Florence a photograph that I took. So make sure you're there, check it out. It's on YouTube. Um, I've organized on YouTube and also on Facebook. Try to jump onto YouTube. I reckon it's just a bit more stable there. I always, having issues streaming on, on Facebook. But um, yeah, catch you guys next time. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks where we're going to do a, a, a more detailed version of Florence. And it's going to be, it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. We're going to make it look exciting. It's going to be sort of shadows, lots of figures, lots of life going on. And uh, I'm going to paint larger as well, much larger sheet of paper. So Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you for coming. And Patrice. Yep, that's okay. You can you can watch it afterwards and and uh, redo redo parts of it as well. You can slow down the video. 
Thank you, Pamela. We'll see you next time. And uh, and that's about it. Yeah, if any any other questions, if you're watching afterwards, just, just add it to the chats and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for coming along.